okay, I converted this right. So that I think I can use this one. This is the perfect one. Uh, so we want uh, any one thing, uh, any one is fine. Just we need to get a true or false. So let me take this. This is the effective one. I'll take this one instead of okay. same thing. I'll just do the large change. Uh, the flag also not necessary. You can directly say that return false. Then break it. Okay. Then here you put return true. Uh, break is not required. You know, returning only, right? So it returns automatically. If it is not uh, same, it will return false for us. That is what we want. Okay. So this is the small change we'll do because this is the effective one not the above one it's not effective code and i use this one this logic to check that where it is polyndrome or not okay so that's a one change uh, i'm going to use that one now so we need to get the smallest and biggest polyndromes right uh, that is what we are going to do so we declared uh, some variables and uh, the variables are smallest to count to we need to count that so that one we declare and also this temporary variable i'll declare here so instead of this i can declare here so we'll give the uh, for this already there we have a string in temp variable we can pass it so i converted into lowercase so the string first part we did right after that we need to check that that's what we are here we split it and then we are uh, getting the so each word the splitting and you got the words and all the words are coming right or not we need to check that so that's a very very important so once you got the length and you can uh, so we'll see that let let's see strings all the string each word is pollen drone so first i need to get a count right each um, string count we need to get if it is a pollen drone so we can increase the count directly because what directly the count you increase so we'll increase that count so this array dot length each word it will come and uh, increase the count so once uh, you increase the count now we need to check one more if condition we need to write so one more if condition what we need to check if count is uh, equal to one so when first polyndromic word is found so initialize we are initialized already smallest and longest and first polyndrome word is found so if count is one so here we'll write the same thing i'll continue here if count is one so what we can do smallest equal to and largest largest equal to what's are five so that's a one we can see so one word only there and this is the one small polyndrome, right we are written small fall in is equal to Big pollen equal to so words of i. That's the one I'm assigning to the both variables. Okay, so that is one. First, if count is one, we have to take all alternatives, right? That's that's the first thing. So if count is one means only one word is there. It's a same small, big, round. Both are same. Sorry, both are same. And else, if count is not one, then what is the cases? So different cases we need to compare smallest and longest polyndrome words in the else part. So write the else. Okay. So here we need to write a else. Yeah. So we'll write the cases. If length of smallest is greater than next polyndromic word, then store that word in smallest okay so what is the one we have to do so let's write the logic here uh, 
before going for this let me write here write comments comments so what is if len length of smallest is greater than is greater than next poly next to ward next polyndromic ward the next polyndromic ward then store that ward in smallest polyndrome smallest to variable we have taken right smallest that's what i'm going to do here let me elaborate this so that you can understand so here so that comparison we'll write it i'll, I'll write here the comparison if small polyn dot length is greater than right is greater than any of words right from the words words of i dot length so words of a dot lng is length and you assign the so you assign that value to smallest small pollen row small pollen we taken right small pollen equal to so words of i if length of longest is less than next polyndromic word so next one is coming right so we have to write another one suppose let, let's write the, all these scenarios is important if length of longest is less than next polyndromic word next polyndromic word then store the word in the longest this is the next one so i'll write that next if long Longer big we took right big big polyndrome so this one big polyndrome dot length i don't know why length the method is not coming is less than so words of i dot length so then you assign that polyndrome big polyndrome is equal to so words of i so that assignment is done suppose so here yeah. So after this, suppose if count is zero, if count is zero, then what is the possible case? Then see, no polyndrome word found, right? No polyndrome word found. Different cases we are writing basically based on the count. No polyndrome found. So else, so you print the smallest and uh, biggest polyndromes. Smallest polyndrome is small. Fall in next same we print uh it's out biggest polyndrome is big polyndrome okay so this is the one after that so you call this method so while calling so we have to take that some string so i'll call this method this method i'll call so first let me declare a string here so we'll declare the string so that i can call here String is car equal to O. So made me is driving race car. So this is the one uh, one more uh, words, polyndrome words. So what will happen here? Now it will convert into. We didn't use this at all. Why do you need this? We didn't use that at all. So string words we used. It is split that and uh, it is called that. So, so let's call the temporary variable. So let's take zero and str so let's see now oh each one it is printing see each one it is checking uh, finally o is the smallest one and uh, bigger one is a race car so this is how you will get but somewhere we each and every word we are taking here so that loop we have to uh, exit this properly I think we'll do by will end here. So I will remove this. Now only one will print. See that? Only one it is printing. O1 race car. Okay. <clears throat> so that's how you can calculate anything you give and you will get it. So this is the kind of you know important program. This one. So what we did, let me explain once again. First, we are taking so this is a bigger program, right? Little bit bigger program. And we are picking whether a given string is polyndrome or not. Each word we have to check. That's why we are written a one boolean uh, method. 
this method is checking if the first character and the last character okay last character is not same it is going to return false if it is same it will keep rotating till uh, if it is not same if it is not same it will update right this returns so if it is same returns true if it is not same returns false okay so that is what it is going to happen that logic again i don't want to write for every word that's why this logic i have written once and i'm going to use that and this one we are using here this is the one finding the smallest and the biggest so one temporary variable and a string i am passing uh, string small polyndrome uh, big polyndrome two variables we have taken initially nothing is there okay and then string words so we are creating an array here so that array i'm using here then i converted the string to lower case and this is the array or you can do the two lines unnecessary so we're increasing unnecessarily the number of lines are four so we can reduce we can optimize whatever ever you want then str dot split based on the spaces we are splitting that then this array and it iterate check each word is polyndrome or not if so first first word will come right if I suppose you take a wow the wow word will come if it is a polyndrome the count will increase now you got the count count is one if count is one then what will happen i'm assigning all to this bigger one else if second case if uh polyndrome small dot length small polyndrome dot length is greater than the any of the word this small you assigned here right so this length is greater than any other array word then you are saying that word so you remember we did uh, in array a uh, small number and bigger number we found so the same thing i am doing here okay and again same for the big polyndrome so you got here small and big those i am comparing if bigger one length is less than any of the array another word so then assign that word to speak polyp. Okay. So that is the one. Then if count is zero, then so you say no polyndrome else. So small and bigger polyndrome, you return it. So that's the simple. There are many other words also also there. Uh yesterday we did oh you that another words we, there are uh, multiple words here. So let me give you this kind of multiple words is we have uh Ethan is a good guy that is the one uh palindrome can pick up all this uh this is very very important another word which is also this one equal to the y so this also one palindrome so you ask this then what will happen is this here which one Ethan is a bigger one right a is the palindrome one word see that is also calculated it calculates each and everything. That's a, a polyndromic string mean, right? And uh, another thing is we have yesterday we discussed one. Remember, yesterday we discussed one uh, uh, that is kayak, right? Uh, string, I didn't remember. Wow, uh, the race car is kayak something. We discussed that. That is another one also, a polyndrome. Yeah. So any of these things you can try a little bit but understand all the array concept to use array type of concept again why we have taken array here is because many words are coming and stores in the string array. each word in it each word we are taking. so first word is polyndrome i'm increasing the count so count will increase one first y will increase right it's a polyndrome so increases if count is one only one polyndrome is there it's a i'm assigning as small and big polyndrome to that word so this this word i'm assigning to both suppose a small polyndrome length to and another word next to word next polyndromic word uh, length to. so this uh, next word length is less than this small polyndrome and i will assign that to this polyndrome next it will increase and same for a big polyndrome also you do the same and big polyndrome assign that value and like that you can calculate 
uh, length of longest is less than the next polyndromic part, then store that in the longest uh, uh, polyndrome. So uh, that like this. this is the kind of programs very very widely asked questions in the interviews. When the collections comes, that is possible with collections only. Directly with the strings, it is a bit tough. That's what we will do in the collections. Those things. Okay. Any questions before going to that? Strings okay. also we we took a lot of time to finish, uh, but so we cannot control the programs and what they are asking in the interviews. But some of them we can cover, but all we cannot cover. Just same methods, and you just think based on the existing concepts. You have to try to solve it. First, understand the problem, then derive your steps, and then follow the method. Apply the methods. That's how you can solve it. Otherwise, it's not possible. And run in debug mode. Then you'll get where is the problem and other things. So that will give you much, much context. Okay. Let's start. What is collections? A collection is a, a dynamic data structure and array is a static data structure. The size doesn't change there. But here, uh, size you can vary at runtime at any point of time. You are not going to specify the size here, first of all. That's the collection. And at your runtime, you can grow your collection, you can reduce your collection, it's all up to you. But array, you cannot do that, right? Once it is fixed, Fixed size, fixed data type of elements only can keep. That's a drawback with that. Right? And collections it accepts only a group of objects. You can store a group of objects, a collection of objects. So collection is a ready-made framework which provides an architecture to store and manipulate a group of objects. That's the collection. So Java collection can be used to achieve Different operations you can perform with these collections, like setting, sorting, insertion, manipulation, deletion, all these operations you can perform on the collection. But first, you should have a collection. If you have a collection, then you can do a manipulation on that collection. What are the different uh, collection hierarchy and which classes and interfaces are there? They're all, I told you, ready made architecture or ready made interfaces and classes are there. And this a collection means a single unit of objects. Java collection framework provides many interfaces and classes. Like interfaces are list to set to queue, DQ, and classes are array list, vector, linked list, priority queue, hash set, linked hash set, reset. These are the classes. So we'll see this hierarchy. Uh, first, uh, the interview question is can you explain the collection hierarchy? The first question they will ask. The collection hierarchy is this one. Uh, it is available in java.util package and first iterable interface is there. Iterable interface, then collection interface. Collection interface below, you have a sub interfaces. List to, set to, queue, DQ. These are the sub interfaces we have. Again, list is implemented by Array list, linked list, vector, and stack. These classes implemented the list interface methods and the collection interface methods and iterable interface methods. That means when the list is already extended to collection, collection is extended to iterable. The multi level inheritance of interfaces side. So, what will happen when you extend a list is a sub interface to collection. A collection is a sub interface to iterable. Iterable is the root interface, and then collection is the sub interface. But most of the methods are all declared in the collection interface only. Iterable has only one method, that is iterator method. So that iterator method we can use to iterate our collection. So that I will discuss. And this list is implemented by array list class, link list class, vector, and stack. And set is implemented by hash set, linked hash set, 
and three set classes. So this is another sorted set is there. One more sub interface for set interface. And interface, what is mean by interface? And static methods also it has all abstract methods you will declare and default and static methods you can define. Constants also you can declare. At the interface. Again, interface you need to implement in the class. Any class you have to implement. That's a mandate. Okay. So these interfaces are implemented in different different classes already done. Implementation is done. You don't need to do that. So list is implemented in the array list class, link list, vector classes. So vector is the super class uh, for this stack. Okay. And again, this set is implemented in the hash set class, linked hash set, and tree set classes. And we'll discuss in detail list and set very clearly. And queue is implemented inside the priority queue. And DQ is implemented in the array DQ and linked list. Uh, these two classes inside this DQ is implemented. This DQ is implemented. So the methods of a collection interface is these are the methods. So what methods are there in the collection interface is these are the methods add method. So add object element. So it is used to insert an element in the collection. Why you will use add method? You want to insert an element into the collection, then you will use add method. Collection dot add object element. Collection dot add object element. So add all method. So collection C. Collection C. So it is used to insert a group of elements into the current collection or one more collection you can join with this current collection. So that's a collection name dot add all and you can give another collection are a group of collection elements you can specify here itself that's the collection and another one is remove method remove method is used to delete an element from this collection to delete an element from collection so collection name dot remove object element so collection dot remove object element you can remove this element from this collection but this element must be there here. Okay. So remove all method. Remove all method. What it does is it removes a collection of elements. A collection of elements you can remove. So it is used to delete all the elements of specified collection from the invoking collection. Collection name dot remove all and so you can give collection C. So public int size. So this is another very, very important method. So there in the array length, you are finding out with the length property, right? Instance variable. But here there is a size method. You want to know how many elements are there in the collection, call the size method on the collection. So returns a total number of elements in the collection. So this is a return type method. So that's why I'm calling the data type of this method variable name equal to collection name dot size method so this is the auto call this size method clear method so removes the total number of elements from the collection you want to clear all the elements from the collection then you can call the clear method next we have a contains method so contains object element so it searches the given element is present in the collection or not. If it is present, it returns true. If it is not present, it returns false. So this is a return type method. There is a contains all method also there. So this contains all method, what it does, you give a group of elements. All those elements are present in the collection or not, it returns true or false. Next, public iterator iterator method this is the one i told you it is available in the this iterable interface iterable interface it is available now the written type of this method is iterator interface another interface it is returning i told you written type can be anything a class interface or array it can be anything so 
this method is returning iterator interface. So that's why I'm writing iterator interface variable name equal to collection name dot iterator method. So iterator method, what it will do? It will iterate the elements one by one. That's the iterator method. It's a very, very important. This is another mostly used method, iterator method. So we'll use the add method, add all method, size method, iterator method, contains method, clear method, and mostly used ones. And iterator. Iterator is every time if you want to iterate, you will call this method only. And this is the syntax how to call. If you know how to call written type methods, this is easy. It's not a complicated, right? This method written type is iterator interface. So first write that iterator interface, it equal to collection name dot iterator method. Then two array, you can convert the collection into array using two array method. That returns an object array. Return type is object array. So you can check is empty, checks if the collection is empty or not. Returns a Boolean value. Equals method. Equals method object element. Matches two collections. Two collection elements it will match. So it returns a Boolean value again. This is another important one. And there is a retain all. So whatever the elements you specify, those will be retained. Remaining all are deleted automatically. It is used to delete all the elements of invoking collection except the specified collection of elements. Only whatever the elements you specified here in this parenthesis, only those will keep. Remaining will be deleted from the collection. That's a retain all, uh, difference between retain all and remove all. What is remove all? Whatever you specified, that will be removed. Remaining it will keep. This is quite opposite. Retain all is whatever you specified that will retain, remaining will be deleted from the collection. So that's a remove all and retain all difference. So these are the methods from the collection interface. We are going to use these are all ready made. You don't need to develop them. So already developed and you can use them, just calling them. That's it. And iterator interface. So, what is iterator interface means? So, iterator interface provides the facility of iterating the elements in forward direction only. Only one direction it will iterate, no reverse direction. So, methods of iterator interfaces, you have three methods are there. Has next method. This returns a Boolean value. What it checks is it returns a true. If iterator has more elements, it returns true if iterator has more elements. And iterator it equal to collection name dot iterator method. Collection name dot iterator method. So while it dot has next, has next method. So while it dot this, this same I use it right in the previously. Again, I'm using here. So if this element has an element, then you get that element with the next method. So what the next method it does is, it fetches the element on that IT variable and cursor will move to next pointer. Next element it will go. That's the next method. Next method is getting the value and cursor will move to next line. That's the next method. This is the logic you're going to use to iterate your collection. The same lines of code you will write, no change at all. So only collection name you will change in this line. This is the only name you will change. Remaining as it is, you can write. The SOP means you know system dot out dot printer. Okay. So this is the iterator interface. So mainly we will use has next method and next method. Has next what it checks? It checks whether the element is there in the IT variable or not. So what are the variable you are uh, specifying here, right? So first this iterator, what it does, it goes to first element of this collection that will store here. Then it will come and you are checking while it dot has next if element is there, come inside and get that element. The element value it will fetch and automatic iteration will happen. Next what it will do, it will move the next element of the collection. So it will fetch that next element and stores here. And again, check if element is there, that value fetch. 
If element is not there, it is becomes false and it won't come inside. So that's how the collection will be iterated with the iterator method and iterator interface methods. You are going to use few of them. As next to next to next. First list interface. List is a sub interface of a collection interface. It contains index based methods. Index based methods means index based you can insert, you can access. You can delete the elements from list collection. It is a factory list interface interface factory of list iterator interface and the list interface declaration is like this public interface already they declared a list. So any object to type this is called uh, generics extends collection name collection so that means it's inherent instead interface and then another interface extending automatically what will happen list can get list methods as well as a collection methods collection methods doesn't have a index base loop. only directly objects you are storing and you are accessing you are uh, getting those elements you are uh, removing them you are finding the length so the, those are the methods are there but so these are the list methods so add method is there add method what it does you can insert this element in a specified index of your collection that's the methods in the list interface add these methods are coming from collection add element e add all collection and element e the collection name collection name you can give here so there is a add all method int index and collection c so what will happen this entire collection will go and place at this index so all index based methods belongs to list interface the normal collection methods are they are directly elements you are inserting into the collection that's the difference between list methods and collection interface methods clear method is coming from collection equals also coming from collection hash code what is this hash code so I told you collections you can store only objects, right? The object hash code, if you want to find out, you will call this hash code value of a list it will return. So get method, get int index. This is a very, very important. So collection element you want to get. How can you get? You have to call this get method. Collection name dot get and give the index. On that index, what object is there? What element is there it will fetch that's a get method mostly used one please understand how can you get the collection element if it is a list collection you have to call get method get of int index okay and another one is is empty method it checks the given list is empty or not if it is empty it returns true else returns false so last index of object element so which so last element index you want to find out this element index you can call this so to array you know that uh, you are getting from there contains is coming from collection contains all also coming from collection so index of particular element index you want to find you can use remove method you can remove the particular element on this index and remove object also there e either one you can use this one or this one but mostly people will use index number they will specify it will remove from there and remove all so this is coming from collection interface replace all so you need to use unary operator so that is not used mostly retain all people will use set method so set method is used to replace the specified element in the list and present at the specified position in this position you can specify this element just uh, so it replaces the element previously you have a different element now we want to replace that you can use this set method it set the new value in that specified index old value it will be replaced with a new value that's a set method so these are all the methods very very important list iterator interface list iterator interface is used to traverse the elements in backward and forward direction suppose you have a list collection you want to traverse them in forward and backward directions 
then you can use a list iterator interface. So this basically list iterator extends to iterator interface. So iterator interface has two method, right? Has an next to next method. But list iterator has a few more extra methods. Has previous so previous methods are there. That means previous element also you can get and it will check the previous element is there or not if it has previous. So that's uh, this uh, list iterator interface methods. And that is the list iterator and list methods and how we can use. So, but basically list is implemented in the array list, right? So we can use array list class. What is array list? You can see here, array list class uses a dynamic array for storing the elements. Array list is a class. So this class inside only list methods are implemented collection methods are implemented iterable uh, interface methods are implemented here so it inherits the abstract list class you can see hierarchy array list is extending to abstract list class this is the class and this is another class now this is the child and this is the parent now in these classes list is implemented collection is implemented iterable is implemented because for the list these two interfaces are extended so what will happen all these methods will come to list so list methods and this collection and iterable methods you have to implement in the array list so that is the how the implementation will happen and some important points about array list array list class can contain a duplicate elements because list contains duplicate elements so array list class contains also duplicate elements list is again okay so array list class can contain duplicate elements because the list provides a duplicate elements you can add list is remember one more point about list list is ordered collection which order you inserted same order it will be maintained and given to you and you can insert a duplicate elements also so array list class maintains the insertion order whatever the order you inserted same order will be given to you array list also so java array list class is a non synchronized so java array list allows random access because array works at the index base the so randomly you can access array list class elements because list works based on the index right that's why you can access randomly your elements so in java array list class manipulation is slow because of lot of shifting needs to taken care when you remove any element Suppose you remove particular position and all the elements will move the, their uh, memory bits. So that takes some time. So that's that's why manipulation is a bit slow here. And the hierarchy of array list class is, you can see here, public class array list extends abstract list, implements random access, clonable, serializable, and a list interface. So why are you not writing collection and iterable? You don't need to write already. You extend it to list. So what will happen list can get all the collection and iterable methods so all the list methods collection methods iterable methods i have to implement in this array list class so that's the array list hierarchy and you can use any of these uh, constructors this is the default constructor it is used to build the empty array list so it is used to build an array list that is initialized with the elements of collection and array list capacity you can give the capacity it is used to build an array list that has specified initial capacity so this is the array list so already these are all ready made so developed already we don't need to do anything here just creating object for the classes and call the methods that's it but so we always specify the interface on the left side right interface that variable equal to that implemented class that's what i explained in the interface and that is the one I'm going to do. So these are all methods, same methods what we discussed in the uh, list interface methods. I don't need to specify again. So next, what is a linked list? So linked list is a another class which implemented the list interface methods and DQ interface methods. And so a linked list class uses a doubly linked list to store the elements. It provides a linked list data structure. It inherits the abstract list class, 
and implements a list and a DQ interfaces. So some points about linked list is linked list class can contain duplicate elements. Linked list class can maintain the insertion order. Linked list class is non-synchronized, even uh, array list also non-synchronized. Linked list class is manipulation is very fast because of no shifting needs occur here. So linked list class can be used as a list, stack, or queue. So you can use linked list as a stack, queue, and list also you can use. That's a linked list means. So this is a double linked list. So this I'll explain you later. Tomorrow we'll discuss these points. Again, this also has a constructors. Same methods available here also, but some extra methods is going to come here to get first to get last to so some elements some extra methods peak method this is the way if you are uh, in you know implementing uh, this as a stack if you are using these methods you will use peak method pop method those things if you are using as a stack so that uh, so we'll see but we don't need that much 